Greetings everyone and welcome to the start of a new campaign in Old World Blues, playing as the Enclave. Which, I've actually played all the Enclave paths before, but I decided to play as the Enclave again because, first of all, it's been a while. Secondly, because I can. And thirdly, I think I, may, I might make this a tradition. For every major update in Old World Blues, I might just come back and play as the Enclave, maybe once. So, And I know my, some of my past Enclave campaigns haven't been too clean or too precise, but regardless, our escape. Years ago, we managed to escape from the destruction of the main Enclave forces at Nevarro. The manner in which we survived can still be felt today. So, we got some technology, four research slots, which is never enough, but we'll get some Ohm's Law, we'll go with Combat Language, and we're going to need to go down our Land Doctrine with Concentration of Force, as well as, well, planes will be pretty good, nearly impossible to make right now, but let's grab some Warrior Training. Also, I've already set stuff around here. Factories. Uh, actually, we could, probably should make some divisions, even though we actually can't make any divisions. Whatever. In the land of the bear. Or in the lair of the bear. We are on the very borders of the NCR. A rogue nation occupying American soil. We cannot deny that they would destroy us if they became fully aware of our existence. Luckily for us, the bear is blind, weakened by bureaucracy, and fighting an, an, an ineffectual leader. With the right efforts made, we can hide under the very nose of the NCR until we are strong enough to reveal our plans, but we cannot keep them in the shadows forever. It will become harder and harder to conceal ourselves as time goes on. And I'm not going to click on that yet, right? Because it does not start until I click on this, right? So yeah, good. Caps, if you like to read about Caps, go right ahead. So yeah, I haven't played the Enclave in the Old World Blues 3.0 update, so our escape. Years ago, we managed to escape from the destruction of the main Enclave forces at Navarro. The manner in which we survived can still be felt today. We... Fought our way out with power armor. Ooh, deserted before the fighting got bad. Escape using vertebrates. Ooh, ooh, you don't tease me with a good time, huh? Mmm, we don't even have an airbase. Actually, do we have any. Nothing, okay. Ooh, I normally choose manpower. I don't want to get the Enclave veteran to, because of the way we're going to go, so. Let's escape using vertebrates. Why not? Our choice. Sergeant Dornan is well respected by both the former and purest factions within the Enclave. The Enclave needs a president, however, and the Sergeant expressed disinterest in being called a serf for the rest of his career. He works for a living, gosh darn it. Oh, here are their national spirits too. So, political and fighting stocks. As well as, actually, Enclave science are pretty good, ex except we get more daily support. And I'll let you know, we're not going down a, or the purest path. We're going to go reformist in this campaign. Complete chaos, and then protected by the Sierra Army Depot. I chose not to go down the purest path just because... I think that might have been the most recent one I've done. I can't remember though. Whatever. Our president. Sergeant Dorn is well respected by both the reformer and purist factions within the Enclave. Nonetheless, neither see him as a viable president and have presented their own candidates. The purists have selected Franklin Anderson as a candidate, while the reformers are led by Douglas Granite. It appears the purist faction has the advantage, but the support of the Sarge could still tip the scales in favor of the reformers. Well. Anderson is a moron. Actually, I forget. I, I said in one of the previous campaigns where if I get the moron thing. I have to go down a certain way. Someone in the comments, I'm sure, probably knows which way I was specifying. But I can't remember. Our president, though. We have made our choice, and that choice will change the future of Enclave if we are successful in America. But who really is a man we elected? Well, we're going to get a lot of reading events for him now. We're going to need some Enclave Auxiliaries. There are 16 combat width, which is not bad, but I honestly prefer a lot more power armor. There are 12 and a half combat width, which is not terrible. And I don't think we'll be able to make this many divisions, but we'll see what happens. Actually, let's just cut it back a little bit. There we go. Uh, good. Oh, God, no. No NCR. So the first thing we're going to do about the NCR, well, I guess we'll talk about that once we have a president. The sins of the father. Grannis passed as a controversial subject in her midst, made all the more contentious by rumors spread by purists. The cause of Grannis' father and his relationship to the Chosen One. The purists accused Grannis' father of treason for aiding the Chosen One and destroying the oil rig, but lack any evidence, despite the fact that he will deny these allegations as nothing but political slander. Douglas remembers clearly what his father told him about that fateful day on the oil rig. He went to aid the Chosen One and went their separate ways. We get mutant, mutant sympathies. Speaking of the Chosen One, let me tell you who your mother was. Or, would you get more mutant sympathies? He didn't aid the Chosen One. I'm going to say he didn't aid the Chosen One. His youth. After traveling around with his son for a few brief years, Granite Senior salvaged contact with one of the Enclave's civilian vaults, set up as a contingency to repopulate the American mainland after the Enclave government cleansed it. Since President Dick Richard had lifted child-rearing restrictions, the vault's population had exploded nonetheless. It was a safer place for a child than in the wasteland, thus Douglas spent most of his youth in the safety of the vault. Like most children on Enclave's vaults, Grant was raised with a fervent hatred of communism. Sadly, 200 years of Enclave propaganda and living in a vault ran under a command economy meant that he, did, that he and most other members of the Enclave were through a vague understanding of what communism was. As such, Granite knew all enemies of America must be communists. 
He gets an anti-communist or spend history playing on his Pip Boy. It just seems more necessary to do this than this. It doesn't seem like he will get that much. He gets first contact. We get first contact. Anyways, he's an anti-communist. Why not? In the first contact, when Douglas was 17, the population of the Enclave Vault reached the utter limits of its life support systems. As a result, a large portion of the healthy and strong were ordered to leave the safety of the Vault to establish contact with the largest group of Enclave remnants, led by an old Navarro drill sergeant. Douglas, however, was quick to contact with his father's granite company instead, slipping away from the rest on scene. His father welcomed him back, giving him a position with the company, where he quickly rose to the ranks. When Douglas was lieutenant with, with, of the granite defense company, he received an emergency distress signal. The message sounded d desperate and came from NCR battalions, Kaiser scouts, Brotherhood Knights. Let's go with the NCR Battalion. Because when Douglas arrived with his team, the situation of the defenders had grown more dire. The battered defenses crumbled quickly under a determined but almost equally bloodied Raider gang. Looking over the sad state of both parties, D Douglas decided to wipe them out. Help take down the Raiders. Oh, we get more. Oh, more compliance. I like that a lot. I love the compliance. I would love to get compliance, but we're helping out NCR Rangers. I don't think they'll wipe them out. And this is one of the things I want to bring up. I want to do, be as ruthless as possible in this campaign. Absolutely ruthless. The reform. If we were to rebuild our once great nation, we must reform ourselves in principle. Sadly, many of the reformist elements have already deserted in the last few years, leaving most of the devoted and fanatical. We have to tread carefully in our efforts to reform the Enclave into an organization fit to restore order, justice, and democracy to these U.S. of A. And that's going to take a whole 20 days? Oh my goodness. Too many days for me, but whatever. And then we'll go take out New Reno. I think all we have to do is just grab New Reno and then they capitulate, if I remember correctly. I did practice just slightly off screen, so. Uh, let's see. Only 500 manpower. I really wish we had more manpower. Whatever. Uh, nerd rage. Whoa. It flickered. Ah, followers of the apocalypse. Followers of the apocalypse? No. G get out of here. What are you doing? Uh, we're gonna raid your supplies. And we're gonna seize your fort. We're gonna lose a lot of manpower doing this. Uh, let's see. Good, that should be enough. This one we can try to improve our relations with the followers somewhat. Nope. We need to bribe NCR officials as well, so. And we'll have something done very soon. And we can do that stuff too, but that's okay. And then. Reform. Oh, legitimacy tutorial. For the first time in centuries, our authorities extended beyond core Enclave members. Considering our previous interactions with these newfound citizens could be easily misinterpreted as attempted genocide, proving ourselves a legitimate government will take time and effort. Certain choices will be will be made to increase or decrease our legitimacy. Higher legitimacy comes with bonuses to our rule and allows for new choices in our focus street. Low legitimacy will come as, with penalties at least, until we find a way to keep the wastelanders loyal regardless of their opinions. You notice that the negative effects of our low legitimacy are currently very weak. The effects of legitimacy become more and more severe as the population expands beyond the core Enclave members. So keep that in mind. The Enclave will tell them what to think. That's the way we want to go. The presidential victory speech. Which we do want to do. The electoral victory snatched from the jaws of defeat. It's time to speak to our supporters and opponents alike about our vision for the Enclave's future. And when, then, then we'll go to war with uh, Reno. Actually, we organize the remnants. That would actually be better to do, get more manpower, but whatever. I would like to put this down for now. Traders among our scientists. Oh, let's click on that. Might as well get that done. Many of our best and brightest were once part of the secret projects or performed at a bar on the rig. For this, they were persecuted relentlessly after the fall of Navarro. None of them have forgotten this. Few have forgiven it. Since the recent elections, progress in some projects has slowed down, laboratory equipment has gone missing, and reports of unpatriotic behavior have become common. I'm not going to click on that. Nope, I don't want any more elite support. Secret stolen. Last night, a small group of traders made off of the bird of burden almost all of our old military codes. The communication suggests that they were opportunists who saw a better future in selling the codes than wherever the enclave is headed. Regardless of their intentions, this betrayal is a severe blow. Many old military bases, including the heavily fortified lower levels of Sierra Armor Depot, are now forever lost to us. We don't need them. Blame the Pierce. Uh, we do want to crack down. I do want to crack down on them. Civil War, when selected. If I can crack down, I'm going to crack down on them. So, that'll be good. However, we have other things I want to do here. Military exercise would be actually pretty good to do. Ah, uh, screw it, we'll do it anyways. Because I want to replace Navarro veterans with political indoctrination. But that's going to take time for the political power, and I want to kill off New Reno first before we actually do that. So, it's going to take some time. But at least for now, it's 46%, even though the intellectuals, our path, is slowly losing popularity, which is not good. And I really don't want... Okay, there it goes. And after that, we're going to do the City of Crime. Reno, a wretched hive of scum and villainy, offers both a secure base of operations on the margins of the NCR and the chance to show the world the benefits of Enclave Rule. 
Let's grab some reference manuals. Let's grab the next one as well. Very, very nice. And immediately, well, uh, we get more organization and less justified war goals times. We get less organization, recruitable population factor, experience soldiers losses. I'm just going to go and do this just because this will severely hurt the ability for the oligarchs, the elites, to get more influence upon us. And which we will probably eventually have to go with Boris T. More intellectual support, it's fine, whatever. Good, that's. Oh, and we got rid of one of our generals, so be it. Dwemer Freeman, huh? Recovery rate 2222. Ah, robotics expert. Well, I'll go with Jacob Dwemer, why not? Mm. Stats on this power armor is not bad. Recon, zero. It is what it is. Save up some command power for this up over here. The followers are established. Divert their supplies. Yeah, go and do that as well. Traders in the office, officer corps. The recent elections have stirred up latent tensions or latent tensions in our officer corps. Many of their most recent, the most experienced and respected military leadership are involved veterans, and there's not a man among them who has not lost a comrade there. It is unsurprising that many of them are taken in, taken in by Anderson's message of revenge against the NCR mutants alike. With the government moving in another direction, tensions are high, and there are whispers of traitors. Well, more daily elite support? I don't think so. And shifts lose stability for political power. Uh, more actually, more weekly war support would not be bad. Once we get this one done, then they should leave us alone. I wish you'd stop hurting my war support, though. City of crime. Reach out to centrists. Nope. Provoke the purists. Oh, actually, that's not bad. It to compromises to the centrists? Nah. Who cares? Provoke the purists. Many of the most devoted purists are on the edge. Feeling control of the enclave's destiny slipping between their fingers, they are eager to abandon words in favor of action. Too, too eager, in fact, this could be exploited. Between an officer corps, quarterly income, followers are established. Hopefully not. We just did the last thing there. Raid their supplies. Oh, come on. If we have the followers of the apocalypse, I mean, I did everything right there. I mean, I've done, it. I've done less, actually, to get them to leave, so... Mm, military exercises. I was just thinking if there's anything else here that we needed to know about. Cool. Immediately go to warp. And you're going to head straight down to New Reno. And head straight down to the stables. You're going to smash through those guys, go to Nixon. And then you guys just go on down there. Cool. And we should win. Without too much difficulty. There you go. Keep them busy. Keep them occupied. They could encircle us and maybe even hurt us, but whatever. I don't really care. And followers rejected. There we go. Having worked out, we have been behind successive attempts to undermine the influence and steal the supplies. The followers of the apocalypse have finally grown tired of our antics and left our lands. Whilst they're happy to tend to our civilians and bases up around the border, they refuse to step inside our nation and protest. We say good riddance. Their anarchists kind of have no business here except attempting to overthrow us. Our people have somewhat annoyed at our choice of action, but at least they'll no longer be swayed by the followers' propaganda. Now encounter with the Crimson Caravan. One of our patrols stumbled upon an expedition of the Crimson Caravan. The squad leader, less trigger happy than some, has reported back requesting orders on how to proceed. The caravan is not close enough to confirm that they are faced with enclave power armor specifically, but rumors of suspicion, but suspicious patrols in Nevada desert can reach the NCR nonetheless. Leave them be. No witnesses. Follow New Reno. We've heard stories. This place is worse than any of them. Cool. We're going to go around the stables. We're going to get encircled, but I don't really care. You guys are going to head through Nixon as well. There they go. Not too many problems there. Resistance is going to suck, though. No occupation. Might as well keep it that way, because we do get cores on them later on. Yeah, let's get some factories, though. Goodbye, new Reno. Goodbye, that. There you go. There you go. Good, good, good. Crown and a jewel. Are you actually... A, oh, you are a trade node. Oh, that helps. Secret language is nice. Let's go ahead and grab... Some construction. Provoke the Pierce because they're allowed to provoke them. There we go. All right, golden cold turkey. The Mordino's a parasite, selling drugs and other bosses to the rift draft of the wastes. So this is still going down a little bit, which we do need to to address. Treacherous officers. Oh man, that sucks. Falls ill. Unfortunately, we could do uh, actually military signing on bonuses would not might not be bad. Did take him out, 174. We get more weekly manpower. Hmm. We'll see. Bribes, minister, our officials, a crackdown. A crackdown again might not be bad either as well. Military exercises I think would be best though. 
procurement things. We're not going to worry about that for now. The federal budget with the conquest of New Reno, the Enclave must now deal with something, something, something it has put off for two years. The federal budget. When the Enclave ruled a series of vaults and oil rigging and redacted, the Enclave relied on a command economy, but now that it rules a substantial population of wastelanders, it seems that it needs to tax them and spend money. For it seems that our wastelanders soldiers want a salary and our veterans want more than just Johnny propaganda tunes. Nothing is certain life but death and taxes. That looks like it hurts us. Uh, motivated by vengeance with the standard wages? Well, whatever. The rad defects of the troll war. The Enclave's liberation New Reno's chased much of the city's riff raft to the ends of the earth. Among those who fled is Thrad, the immortal, one of, one of the Master's greatest warriors. He's defected at the Troll Warren, where he has ra rapidly risen in the first ranks ranks. In the first ranks. These reinforcements will give the Troll Warren a powerful tool against the Washington Brotherhood, who is already overextended, oppressing its neighbors. What seems like the Brotherhood problem. Oh, they actually get a research out. Wow. Patrolling New Reno. For the first time in the Enclave's history, we've reclaimed an American city. However, New Reno's population does not see it this way yet. While there are some hopeful that the gangsters are being pushed out, others fear and distrust of power armored strangers patrolling the streets. Minor acts of resistance, such as throwing rocks or insults, are not uncommon as, as unsavory types test the limits of our troops' patience. If we appear weak, small arms fire may soon follow. Teach them not to mess with the Enclave. More war support, less resistance. Establish strict rules of engagement. Teach them not to mess. First fights break out. Heated argument turned violent in the general staff cafeteria today. Unsurprisingly, the topic of the argument was the recent elections. Though many claim he was provoked, none denied that the person supporting, supporting the reform of cause threw the first punch. This normally insignificant issue is gathering a lot of attention, we've been asked to intervene. An ungrateful position to be in, since defending the aggressor would reflect badly on us, but condemning him would come across as a stab in the back of the most zealous reformers. Pierce had a coming. No executive for striking a fellow officer. I like the political power, though. Share, both share blame? Ah, the screw, screw stability. Cafeteria incident. A disturbing photo has been circulating among cafeteria staff, involving one of the staff members intentionally handling ingredients inappropriately. Make a show of finding and punish the man. We have more important matters to turn to. All political power. we got to get as much political power as possible. So that'll be good. Hold a small speech. None of this stuff really matters too much. We just need... Oh, actually, we got to deal with the Vangrafts, too. Warrior training's nice. Ooh. They lose manpower. Make a deal with the Vangrafts. Uh, deal with them. Make a deal. We're going to just deal with them. Just deal with them. Cool. And crowd control gear. Probably be get support equipment. That's good to get eventually, too. Extend admin shifts. Yeah. Don't hurt stability too much. New Reno disabled for now. Going cold turkey. I would go and do some old allies. Salvatores will remember the last time in New Reno. Remember our last time in New Reno. It might be worth cutting a deal with them again. Dealing with the Mordinos, though. Mordinos long represented the status quo of New Reno. That is to say, criminality, exploitation, and chems of misery. They had many allies, but no friends, and few were now willing to lay down their lives in defense of the chem lowers. We may strike quietly and expect only limited resistance, but we have some. some but some have suggested that we should use Mordinos to demonstrate we are serious about our old world values. They'll be tried in court of law. Just as long overdue. Very long overdue. This is his care package. And we do get them as cores eventually. Uh, we can bribe these guys, actually. I kind of prefer to do that one. Cost even less in the future. That'd be good. Next step, I gotta get Boris T. Right. How much money are we gonna make now? 19? Better than nothing. Old allies, then we'll do. Actually, can we do this stuff over here? Oh, we can't infiltrate the NCR. I kinda like that. Currently 10, so we gotta wait. A shared dream. The Riots dreamed of a peaceful, prosperous city. Maybe they can collaborate with us towards a better tomorrow. Today. Major Grimm. Speaks out in favor of Anderson. During a heated argument in the officers mess hall today, Major General Grimm has loudly spoken of favor of Franklin Anderson and his ideas about the Enclave's future. A few choice words were aimed at both the mutants of the NCR and our President Douglas Graham. While the, other, while the officer in question may be a capable leader in the field, we should note the opinions of the commanders we appoint to lead. What they say in the mess hall and over the radio will always affect their loyal soldiers. It's time for Major Grimm to, ha Grimm to have an accident? Demote him for entirely other reasons? He is entitled to his opinions. That's why we're going to be ruthless dealing with the Salvators. The Salvators have been useful to the Enclave in the past, dealing with us in order to expand their own influence in New Reno. Perhaps they can be useful once again. A puppet ruling New Reno's inner name could help make the situation in the city less suspicious to any outside observers. Mrs. Salvatore's old smuggling connections may also prove a valuable resource to us, should we decide to keep him alive. Rule the puppet? He can live under house arrest. We rule in New Reno now. Actually, do we get him? Uh, do we get to see that? John Yeager, huh? Mm, I like always. I always like to get Arjun Dorn. Boris, he's pretty good too. Well, I don't see him, so we rule. We rule, not them. 
Uh, what else can we choose here that gives us more daily intellectual supports? That's not bad, but why would we send volunteer divisions? Uh, Boris T is always good to get. Sycophant. Daily elite support? No, 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 no. I'm okay with that. Mm, that's not bad. I kind of like Jerome here actually quite a bit. <clears throat> he will save us a lot of political power. I'm going to choose him one out. And then we'll probably go with Boris T. Until we remove him. Currently we get 0.3 political power every day. Wow, that sucks. That really sucks. We got about two weeks left, roughly two weeks. Legitimacy is null and void because it's behind the stage entry tool mod. I guess I should let you know which mods we're using. So the mods we're using for this campaign are obviously Enclave Reborn, Old World Blues, uh, Old World Blues Radio, Player of Peace Conferences, Stage Transfer Tool Mod, and Colored Events. So I think it's six. If I can, if I do my math correctly, I'm gonna grab work as needed. That'd be good. Ah, uh, some resistance and such. What? What else is new? Dealing with the riots, some say that the right family spent the last few decades building with one hand and destroying with the other, but compared to the other families, this makes them almost redeemable. Mr. Wright's vision of more peaceful and stable New Reno is not entirely incompatible with without own. Without own? Without without our own, huh? Allow him to go legit. Which well, is not bad, but whatever. There's no place for his kind here. No place. Followed up by checkmate. The bishops plotted to bring New Reno into the NCR. That was a mistake, and Music Vault found. During their efforts to clean out the, some of the smaller criminal organizations in New Reno, long clad soldiers have stumbled on a treasure trove of pre war audio tapes. The vast majority of the tapes have, sur have survived and hold a long lost tunes of the old world. Collected by a wealthy crime lord over the course of decades, the propagandistic, propagandistic value of such a collection should not be underestimated, as very little music is available to those within the Enclave. Patriotic songs? Not bad. Old world nostalgia? Not bad either. I kind of like that. Release the tapes freely. I like that political power. I really do. Let's see. Are we getting? We're actually getting more for now. Pushing us over the edge would not be bad either. Consolidate power more than fifty percent support after this one. Ooh, with this much support already, I love the political power. I'm gonna go with this one. Radstack Counter Shop. If you want to read about this, go right ahead. This happens almost every campaign in Old World Blues. So, take forty cases. More stability. Why not? Doesn't matter to me. Cool. 50% and it's still slightly going up, which is good. After checkmate. Actually, let's look at that one. Currently 10. That's fine, whatever. Uh, we'll do consolidate power. While we are gaining the upper hand, the PRS are alive and well. It's time to gather all those who still disagree with our vision in one room so we may address them and their qualms. Many can still be swayed to our side. We could do this one, but it takes 30 days. I'd rather get this one done more quickly, so consolidate power would be very good to do. Well, after we get some more research done first. And who knows how long we'll have 50% support, so. Dealing with bishops. The bishops may have been the most powerful family in New Reno. Mr. Bishop himself, though, is a dangerous man for many reasons. One of which, of course, is his numerous political connections to end the NCR. The crime lord's gangsters were low enough to face down other families, but the sight of XL1 power armor sent them scattered. He was retreated to his mansion, accompanied by only the closest and most loyal, surrounded by forces and trapped. Focus on capturing their assets? Get their leader. Good, good, good. Oh, uh, we can actually probably get some more army XP gain. That's not too bad. That's actually probably a pretty good idea to do so. Anything over here, we lose political power, which is not ideal. But, whatever. Actually, we could raise the conscription level to... Um, hmm. DL elite support. Armaments. Unpopular pragmatist. It's not too bad for minus 10% army energy cell consumption. And who do we have for military leaders and such? Attack. Well, this guy looks a lot better. Richardson, more intellectual support. Uh, Charles Gibbs, defense. Well, I'll just choose military theories. That's pretty useful. Pretty darn useful. My gosh, we need more manpower. Jack, a shadow Jack Churchill speaks out in favor of Anderson. During a heated argument that officers mess all today, shadow Jack Shadow Churchill has loudly spoken out in favor of Franklin Anderson and his ideas about the enclave future. A few choice words are aimed at both the mutant of the NCR and a president, Douglas Granite. While the officer in question may be capable of leading the field, we should note that the opinions of the commanders we appoint to lead. What they say in the mess on over the radio always affect their loyal soldiers. <laughs> Gotta be ruthless. Gotta be ruthless. Hamilton regular, huh? Scott Blair? It's time for promotion. David Stevenson? Welcome aboard. Be our leader. Uh, let's see. Pain, inspirational. That's a really good one to get. 
Gonna do local leader as well. Nothing really here that says to me you gotta do it. Recon. Actually, less speed. It wouldn't be too bad. Less speed, more reconnaissance, but we don't have any. Oh, we will get recon eventually. So, actually, go with recon. And we don't have enough of that. Fine, whatever. Alright. We're gonna flip fire to do this, maybe? Promote the node. Concentration of force. Good. Let's grab some rapid deployment. That'd be awesome. Can we do it again? Um. Well, we already did it, so thank you. Thank you for your time. Hide activities from the NCR, huh? Old bones? That's alright. It's all new power. Tensions have been high since the elections. It appears that support for the PRS has only intensified as a result, especially in the upper echelons of a government. To address this situation, we have collected all those for, with grievances to, towards the new U.S. government into one room and waiting answers from the new president. Somebody hand me my speech. One room, you say? Remove treacherous scientists and officers. Get a lot less support of oligarchy, stability, war support, civil war. One room, you say? I'm going to go ruthless. Out with the old. By the time anyone realized that the president wasn't coming, it was too late. The only exit was locked. Now, all they're left to do is dealing with the aftermath. Too bad Anderson couldn't attend. Nice. Absolutely ruthless. Now, we need less than 15% support for the purists, which is good for the new capital. Uh, actually... It's currently 10, huh? We've broken the backs of the scum that run New Reno. Look how much happier with everyone is with Enclave soldiers patrolling the streets. No complaints, not even in private. I could have chosen that, because now we have no stability. And legitimacy is actually probably hurting us badly, but I can't see. But I don't really care about legitimacy, as you can tell. 57% uh, has got to get higher and higher and higher. Or, at the very least, we've got to just remove more and more Franklin Anderson support. If we get found out, I'm not worried about it. We can, like, cease resource extraction. doesn't matter. The new capital will be great. The Enclave Police. The first brick. Or, prepare expansion. Well, I'd rather assassinate Dr. Anderson as fast as possible. Assassinating Dr. Anderson will crush opposition towards our tolerant, inclusive enclave. Less oligarchy support, less stability. Assassination of Franklin Anderson must occur. And we currently have about a week left, so. Follow the shack market. A new profession seems to appear recently in the wasteland. People call themselves realtors just keep trying to buy and sell shacks for no apparent reason. This has caused some slight instability in the region, but we think it's an easy way to depart some peasants with their bottle caps. Cha-ching! Maybe some oversight is needed. I like oversight can be pretty useful. Let's get some automation too. Feels weird not trying to research uh, gliders. Operational security compromise. Mr. President, we are hearing disturbing reports of NCR radio chat in reference to our facilities. We've also received one report of an NCR spot stumbling into one of our conference rooms, completely unaware of where exactly he was. Needless to say, the NCR is sure to notice something is terribly wrong if we don't act now. Continue to operate as normal may have dire consequences. Time has come. No, no, no. Cease resource extraction. We need more time, the Wastelanders. With the government... Oh, okay. The city of New Reno now fully under our control. We are now governing over a significant amount of Wastelanders. Since we cannot install Enclave members to every single position of influence in the city, some Wastelanders begin exercising an amount of power within our borders. This is inevitable. So I suppose we should encourage this. Not on my watch, they don't. Nope. New Reno slaves. During the liberation of New Reno, we've come across a large amount of slaves, triggering off a debate as to whether we should allow the practice of slavery in these United States. Although there's those who say slavery is un-American, others point out that a captive workforce could be a boon to our economy and has a historical precedent. As a compromise, we could adopt Vault City's servitude system, providing food, protection, shelter, and medical care in exchange for involuntary servitude. But others say that seems like slavery with extra steps. A boon to our economy. If they want slavery, they would have elected Anderson. Vault City's servitude is reasonable. Soon, slavery is a boon to our economy. No longer fair uh, slavery. Uh, oh, wait, what? Okay, well, there goes the thread the immortal. Huh. Slave labor? Oh, well, minus 20% of people population. But we got a good amount of manpower right now, which I'm feeling mighty good about. Jackals were annexed, so be it. We need a lot more power armor, though, now. Remnants wish to return. We've been contacted by the leader of a sizable company of Enclave Remnants. They survived the decades as raiders, greatly feared due to their advanced tactics, tactics and technology. Having heard rumors of the return of the Enclave, they're asking to be reinstated into our armed forces. All the extra manpower could be very useful, their disdain for the mutants rival that of Anderson and his ilk. We must therefore consider the political consequences of accepting them into our ranks. Particle sons have returned. Enclave, no Enclave here. We don't need raiders or equipment. However, the lose stability, I gotta do it. Nice. Absolutely ruthless. Tool procurement, thank you very much. More construction speed, thank you very much as well. Halfway done with that focus. Good, good, good. 
23 caps, not bad. Pierce is looking great. Very great. After that, actually, how many more days do we have? We got more than enough time. Prepare expansion, not feeling like it. I'm just going to go ahead and do the infiltrate the NCR stuff. So, we can make contact with those in the NCR who want to restore pre war America's glory. Suspicion, suspicion will go down by 35 political power, whatever. It's currently 10. Whatever. I don't really care. It's a little bit of a waste, but I want to get to Enclave every day for more daily political power, better decryption, and stuff like that. Assassination of Franklin Anderson, though. The good old doctor has been a thorn in our side ever since his loss in the election. His connections and wits have kept him alive until now, but we have politically outmaneuvered him at last. Despite quickly running out of allies, Anderson has stayed put in the Sierra Armor Depot, certainly fulfilling his administrative duties. It was in his office that our operatives found him unprepared for the confrontation. Perhaps he had resigned himself to fate. Perhaps he was too single-minded to see how dire a situation had become. All the same, Franklin Anderson, though, was buried in an unmarked grave in Golgotha. If anyone noticed his disappearance, they were wise enough not to notice it out loud. We made sure of that. Define until the end? What a target. And once again, we got another rag stag candle shop. We'll take 40 cases. Slightly more stability. Slightly more. But not that much more, you know. It's quite a few days for that one, actually. So we got like three weeks left for that, huh? Not bad. Not bad. Construction of soldiers is coming on along quite nicely, I'd say. I would like to increase the, the, our, these guys at 20 combat with. I don't remember exactly, but 20 combat with should be able to hold out against the NCR. Should be. So 10, 12 and a half combat with is not bad, but at the same time... I feel a lot more secure as long as we have at least one power armor division per thing. Uh, let's see. Leave them be. No witnesses. Uh, actually, isn't there a decision for us to stop that? Because we saw that once already. Political actions, procurement of things, curb wastelander influence. Entice. Oh, maybe it's under this this one this path too. Over to radio crack stage radio attacks. Uncle radio calling favors. I thought that was a decision. We're going to purge the opposition regardless. There are many in our midst who do not share our vision for the future. They must be dealt with. Yeah, we got to we got to do that one as fast as possible. I really thought there was a thing here. Bribe NCR officials, of course. Work hard is needed. Work is needed. Improvised tools would be good. Crimson Caravan. Send out spies. Oh, there we go. Send out some spies. That'll be good. And then we can reroute them. So we have spies. That That's where it is. Cool. Actually, we got a little bit of political power here now. Research, war support goes up. War support goes up even higher. Extend research shifts. Extend construction shifts. That's war support, huh? Actually, that is 30% construction speed. It's not bad, but we don't have that many factors already to begin with. Military theory committee. It's not bad. Military exercises I would like to do. Arrange disappearances. It doesn't matter at this point. This stuff doesn't even really matter at all. Not bad. I think we're doing pretty darn well. And we'll do one more focus before we end the episode here. So... Ah, slavery. Oh. Four days? Wait, what? Weekly stability goes down? More war support? Oh, huh. I I've never seen that one before. Okay. Well, we don't have that much war support. We don't got that much stability. Kind of sucks. It's all right, though. Let's go ahead and do this one as well. How much caps? How many caps do we have? 147. Let's go and do this one. That'd be fine with me. Oh, actually. I'm so used to getting at least one political power every day. Yeah, legitimacy minus 12% political power. Not good for us. Not very good. 20 days left. Cool. NCR, declare war on Umbra. Go to war with them, folks. After that... Actually, I forget. I said this too. With the Enclave Police. Was it that we were going to do Out with the Old? Or Amnesty for Service? I think we might go Amnesty for Service, but... Actually, we might do Out with the Old. I'm not really sure. I don't remember. I'm, I'm pretty sure I said before, like, I'd choose one of the other ones, but I can't remember at this point. But we're going to do Enclave Radio regardless. Our spies' radio co beacons could be used to broadcast the Enclave's message to the Californians. Let's sympathize as far and wide hear the Enclave's vision. While we're at it, those same beacons can also be used as listening outposts. Get more daily political power, 20% more uh, decryption. We get two radar stations, so that helps us in combat. So that would be very, very nice. Uh, yeah, home is Nevada. Oh, home is Nevada. It's, it's, it's an okay part of the focus tree. I'm glad it's there, but it's definitely not my most favorite path going down with the Enclave, so. The Federal Bureau of Investigations. Cool, but that's where we're going to end today's episode right there. 
If you enjoyed today's episode, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow, as we might end up in a war with the NCR. Probably. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.